Always wear your personal protective equipment. In this video, I'll be wearing safety glasses, hearing protection, respirator as needed, gloves, and always, these videos are made for entertainment purposes only. Please enjoy. Hey guys, it is trailer inspection day. Let's check out a whole pile of things. Hey guys, trailering tips. Make sure your ball, your hitch is well lubed. I also lubricate inside here for the tongue. And you can see it right across here. So when this latches down on the ball, it has no issues whatsoever. Another quick pointer would be to make sure your tires are properly inflated. Like that one. Also, check your uh, tread. This one has a bit of a groove in it. So that says that it was over, or sorry, underinflated. And this one has a nice good tread wear. So this tire has issues. We do have a spare, so I'll probably end up putting that on. That's your grease gun right there. And then these are easy hubs. It's usually better to do it with a uh, flathead. Definitely a flathead. So that right there says there's grease. You just stick your, your, your gun on, and then you pump this until you see the grease. It's a little harder with one hand. Pump, pump out or stop. So once you're able to, these are easy hubs. It pushes the grease into the hub. Kind of hard with one hand, but hey, you get the idea. And it has a grease nipple inside there. So you see the grease coming out. That means you're full. So you just replace your seal, which is easy enough. says so boom you're done so another quick idea about generators one don't let them sit for longer than six months the fuel is on always turn the fuel off when you're done so that's on it had no fuel in it the guys are trying to get this thing started and they're like it doesn't run I don't think they knew how to start it and I can't even get this to prime up that's how dry it is so I got the primer a little bit. That's good enough. Choke is on, that would be off right here. So that's the priming. And then choke on. And again, don't leave it for more than six months without starting it, running it, having it a full cycle. I also found this to be on. So we'll take the choke off. trying to start this thing with no fuel in it so I'm backing up the trailer guys I tend to keep this just a bit lower than the ball right now it's higher but that way I'll hit the ball with the hitch so the ball will hit the hitch and I'll know where I am then I'll raise this up so that this goes just underneath the little lip here so I go with the, the rounded edge right here it'll hit this lip that's where I like it and it goes on top and that way you know you're in the appropriate position you bring it down Give the trailer back and forth for the, uh, the transmission and that way it's jostled a little bit after that's raised up obviously and then that way you know the trailer is situated properly on the receiver so as you can see we're a bit closer now and the reason for that is because i do this slowly and uh, i put the e-brake on every single time i back up and stop so see the e-brake is on BR in reverse. That's how I do things. That way the vehicle doesn't go a few inches forward or in back when uh, you're trying to hitch up. So we'll just touch the throttle there. Yeah, that's it. Has this, this vehicle? These new vehicles have this hill climb deal, so they don't actually disengage. So sometimes you get stuck, which kind of messes you up. So these new features on a vehicle are not the best thing. There you have it. a nice ideal, maybe a little bit too far uh, back, but that's okay. If you look in here, it'll drop down. See down there? It'll drop down nice and easy. So now we'll just push it down. See how she reacts. That's one of the good ideas. Look, engage. That's a 
goes to the right side. Right goes to the left side. Now you want the lashes to be engaged. These ones are a bit difficult. But this is what keeps your... They're kind of they're kinda funky. Always will be. So that's engaged. And then you have your your um, chains hanging down. If they're too low, you can just turn it, and it will bind the chains up a little bit. As you see here, and then I mean it will raise itself up. So not not bind the chain hangs down lower than a binded chain. But you want enough so that it'll, when you turn, it'll be able to sway back and forth. And always raise up your uh, your trailer dolly there. So on the other side of the trailer, we have these rocks. These are tire chocks, very cheap and expensive. That way nobody runs off with them. You can find them anywhere. them before you start your journey. So I did here to guys, I primed it, primed the generator, made sure there was fuel. I popped the, uh, the screw off the bowl, made sure there was fuel in there. So we had fuel all across, it's in the choke form. And uh, I'm gonna be checking for oil, obviously. So we'll do that now. Because it has an oil shut off. And if we don't have oil, it's not going to run. And it looks like there's lots of oil on there. So that is not an issue. I just think it has issues with not being run enough. So if she fires right back up, we will know. spark plug and it's wet so that's a good sign of getting fuel it did run for a little bit but obviously that's not on camera it's a brand new spark plug I always uh, make sure I have spares of everything of this kind of stuff because they're easy fixes so we're gonna swap that in I have to change the uh, top psyllium this is a uh, one that comes apart and then you have that little so don't ever really lose that that way you can put it into the spark plug cap so as I said this is the old spark plug, as you can see here. The cap is removable. That way you can still get the electrode on top of it. 
So when we're installing the spark plug, put it in first by hand, and then when you crank it down with the, with the wrench, you do it just hand tight. Now obviously it's not doing anything, but you get the idea. And once it's just snug, that's it, you're done. So we just changed the spark plug out. Everything's all tight inside here. See, oh, out of the way, it's all nice and tight. Turn to the round position. Check your plugs, check your oil, check your fuel, and then uh, pull start. Hopefully you still got the battery power for that. If uh, yours, is, yours is electric start, these do, the new ones do have a, a low oil shut off. And when you're done with the, with the uh, generator, turn off your fuel. And what I like to do is I run it until the uh, carburetor is empty. PSI, so I keep it at about 70. Probably noticing a trend that uh, I always keep my 10 pounds less, it all depends. If it needs 45, I'll go to 40, not really a big deal. So, again, check all your running gear, take a look at your suspension, see what's going on, make sure your spare tires go okay, make sure your spare tire has air. This is a new vehicle, so you can kind of be like, okay, we got nothing to worry about. But there could be some installed random wires hanging down. Around, see what's around, see if it's leaking any fluids. And then uh, on the inside of the cab, where I found an issue, wires hanging down, so if I pressed the brake pedal, I could destroy that. That's not impertinent, but it does look like that green wire could be a ground wire. And if I get if I pull that stuff off, I won't be able to stop perhaps, like over here. But that's just for the cameras. So again in the front part of the vehicle. We take a look at the suspension, make sure there's no fluids on the ground, check for anything, check the tire, check the tread. This is obviously a brand new tire, it only has 13,000 kilometers on it, so it look good there. And the side, the engine compartment, make sure you've got washer fluid, if it doesn't, brake fluid, you can just hit it, you'll see the fluid right here. Um, take a look at the engine, take a look at the serpentine belt, take a look at any of the components you might think could break down. Coolant especially, my mom's vehicle just blew up because of that, not her fault. Again, check your oil, make sure this oil dips it properly, make sure your vehicle's on level 
level ground when you're checking it. Again, transmission fluid, same thing. Pull it out, make sure the fluid's there, make sure it doesn't smell burnt, make sure it's a nice red, bright color, as you can see right there. Turn it along. If you want to, you can pull your air filter apart. I'm not going to do that with this one. name of fuel efficiency. So you pull that apart from your bolts on the top, it comes off, take a look at it, but again, 13,000 kilometers. I'm not going to worry about that. We'll see the it runs fine, doesn't seem sluggish at all. So, check your tow vehicle. The last thing about your tow vehicle, make sure the hood shuts and it stays shut. Another quick pointer, make sure you clean out your tow vehicle, make sure nothing flies underneath the seats, make sure Everything is in its place. Your tire jack is right there. Make sure of that. So, pull the seat back would be awesome. So, I checked everything. The tire jack was all the way out. Somebody had gotten here, so they obviously had a flat tire. But uh, I made sure this was in place so that if anything does happen, I can lift the vehicle up, change the tire, put everything back together on the side of the road. As far as the bed of the truck, I'm gonna. Those are my tire chocks that I'm gonna keep with me. I'm not gonna worry about stones because uh, they would just fly all over the place and make a lot of noise. The wood, not so much. It'll go to the back here. But if you have anything, you need debris in the back. Get rid of it. You don't want it flying out for any kind of reason. Keep your bed nice and clean, except for the tools that you need. If you look here, so your tow mirrors. One of the things I did with this truck is I outfitted it with big giant moose mirrors. Keep safe on the road so you can see what's going on. Let this run for well over an hour. She is well charged. Pick it up. Oh, there she goes. Now I still have to get fuel. It's obviously full. This is the tank, the extra tank I mean. And I always put premium fuel into my small engines. Obviously it's a generator, but because it sits for so long, premium fuel is what she's gonna get. Probably the boss will say something, but it's only a little bit, right? <laughs> so one thing that's happened is somebody let some machinery come from the back of the truck and hit the front. Didn't break the window obviously, but it's pretty close. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to seal underneath here because you can tell that it's, it's pushed the, uh, the metal in and the glass is just at that point. So it's obviously gonna need a seal. I keep saying the word obviously. Um, and I'm going to use these bad boys plus uh, a ratchet strap underneath. I'm gonna see about pulling it back. So this is what it looks like. there's we look at this how thin that metal is so that's just one eighth that's nothing okay well that's that fixed i'm gonna hammer it down with a hammer some wood probably a sledgehammer if they don't break the uh the glass and uh put the plastic back over and you only go tell very nice doing body work for the crank Sledgehammer, that's it down, but I'll be 
to see. Things are still a bit out of whack. But it is what it is. The control is a lot better. Now I'll just seal this. We're done. So in order to uh, acquire the fix, put two big straps down either side of the bed, as you saw. One strap down in the middle, tied to each either end. That goes around the hook using the, the A symbol. Hold the bed back. Beautiful. Problem solved. So next part of the trailer is checking your wire loom, making sure it's not damaged. All the way across. That's your trailer brake. That's supposed to be attached to the hitch. And apparently it's broken. So that's good. Um, I also noticed that this is also broken. So we're gonna have to fix that. We'll see what still functions. Now that all this is reattached, minus the wires, which I will get to, I just wanna check to see what actually functions on here. I would never have actually used these connectors because they they always get corroded, as you can see. I would have used some sort of military waterproof style. I would have a plug to protect it. You know, but I didn't install this. So I just checked all the connections here. Obviously these are all loose, but I'm gonna tighten them up with some zip ties. And then I went up to the top part right here. And as you can see, I had four cameras, only one is currently working. And I would have never installed one there anyways, but that's just me. So I went and checked all the connections and the one camera is mounted to the front of the trailer, which is a bad place to mount. It should have been mounted to the vehicle so we can line up the hitch to bring it all in. Um, same, it's a lot more useful because then it's also doubles as your backup camera. Now the backup camera is the, I think it's a high end, oh, it doesn't matter what it is, the car behind the trailer. So at least we have two cameras that work. The left and rights are AWOL. I looked around, could not find them. The wiring is all there, but cameras are not. So the wiring is at the bottom of the trailer comes up through and then gets one goes down to the back that one's already connected and then we have the wiring coming up to the front and you see right here that's the one that's not connected and then over there is where the other one is not connected so both left and rights brew so I came to look underneath here see if there's anything hanging down and I found these guys hanging down. So I'm gonna get some zip ties, zip this out of the way. So now all the wires are tucked up nice and tight. They won't get caught on anything. The one thing I did notice is that there's a hole here. And that means dirt, water, and debris can get up in there. So I'm gonna seal that with silicone. And that way it's all plugged up. This is what I did with the, uh, the, the pipes here. I did this originally years and years ago so that you would never have any issues no matter what but that was a different day. So somebody went really hard on these wires. I don't like them. I was gonna repair what was here, so I just put the tape over, as you can see, and uh, put a bypass for that one. That way everything works. Two, like, two things on the cameras work. I don't have the other uh, two cameras that become like a set, so everything's all wired up, just the extra two cameras are key wall for the moment. I did call around to see what uh, the guys know of, find out but in the future I'm going to change all of this to the proper connectors. Something waterproof. Something that looks kind of nice. This is a uh, dog's breakfast. So we're going to seal the back window. Let's go across here. You can tell that it's kind of broken. So over here you can see my gloves and then as I'm going over my fingers are disappearing and right here I can actually get them inside. So we're gonna be sealing all of this up. With this. <laughs> so this is some silicone that I've had over from some of the previous jobs. And I couldn't find my cocking gun, probably because it's at home. I have numerous at home, but none here. So I've used a plunger style. And that's gonna be my problem solver for having an oversized cocking gun. So as you can see guys, it does work. Basically, what we're going to do is stick this like that. That's it. Then whip off the excess. So, 
there you have it. This is a work truck after all, so it doesn't have to be pretty. But if you look along here, I just filled up the gap that was there with the silicone. Again, it does not have to be pretty. So the wind noise is gone. So the 2.2 is where it's at when I'm uh, braking. So now it's uh, at C. I'm not sure what that means. It should be 0, 0. If I put my foot on the brakes, it goes to 1.3 which is what it's supposed to like it's not actually braking braking. Now if I manually do it, I set it at 8.0 and it stops the trailer. The trailer's not moving right now. So I wouldn't drive, foot's on the brake, I can go forward. So if I go in forward, go from zero to a little bit of connection and then put my full foot on the brake, now I have full brake. And I can feel that they, they're engaged, but not all the way. So they need some sort of adjustment. That's for sure. So they're worn out. Um, typically, it should be responsive to how much pressure you're putting on the brake. And it's changing. Like if I put off the brake, what goes on the brake, you can see that the number is changing. So there's some mechanical issue with the brakes. So they need to be addressed. Because when you're idling like this, you should be able to go forward, manually hit the brakes, and there should, should be able to act like 8.0 should be more than enough stopping power to be able to stop the truck. But um, if I take my foot off the brake, and now they're engaged, I can feel them, and you can hear them too a little bit. Oh, it just stopped. Yep, yeah, barely right there, it just stopped. So they're not working correctly. That's one way how to tell. At idle, you should be able to stop dead. And your brake should be just under the vehicle being able to push. And then it should slowly just stop. You shouldn't be over braking with the trailer, and you shouldn't be under braking, obviously. So this is a problem. Just back the trailer up. If you can look here, I got within a millimeter. So checking the lights and then we'll walk to the front corresponds we'll check the next side corresponds so we'll go to the right side So guys, that concludes our testing of the vehicle's brake system, uh, lights, uh, getting it all ready for the road, checking all the bearings and hubs and all that nonsense. We do know that the brakes are shot. They're completely done. Um, so there'll be a, a video separate of me working on the brakes and how what I'm gonna find and how I'm gonna fix it. Um, hopefully these are just stock items that I can get off the shelf. Uh, so we're gonna find out the hard way. Um, that being said, thank you for watching if you made it this far and uh, we'll continue this adventure later.